Hi YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, the new 10.2 preview thing that World of Warcraft have posted on their YouTube. It's uh, the content that's coming up on the PTR and probably going to be a lot of Emerald Dream stuff. That's where it's sort of all going, but I've not watched it yet. But uh, yeah, like and subscribe if you uh, want more daily video gaming content. This is the first time I'm sort of covering recent news. That's not Nintendo Direct or something like that. So uh, yeah, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you're looking forward to 10.2 if you've watched this already. If not, let's dive in together. I'll see you there. Orc on a wolf. I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping it's going to be pretty fun though. It's a short little 14 minute video. We'll go through it. We'll, we've got the luxury of pausing. It's not like a live stream. But uh, yeah, we'll see what's happening, shall we? I'm looking forward to this. Hello everyone, welcome to WoWcast. Today we're going to talk about our next major content update, Guardians of the Dream. And I have two special guests here with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Uh, hi, hi, my name is Taylor Sanders. I'm an encounter designer on the World of Warcraft team. And I'm Ann Stickney. I'm a senior narrative designer on the World of Warcraft team. Thank you guys so much for joining us. What is coming with Guardians of the Dream? Yeah, so Guardians of the Dream is a huge content. Who can update. guess? Uh, we have a new Ooh. outdoor zone, the Emerald Dream itself, right, that we're going to be traveling to. We have a new raid. Uh, we have new public events within um, the outdoor zone New raid zone in itself. the Emerald Dream, that and looks fun. And then also uh, Season Sounds 3 will fun. be launching as well. So we just finished up Fractures in Time. Can you tell us what's next? What are we going to expect in this major content update? Well, with Fractures in Time, we kind of wrapped up the story of the Bronze Dragon flight, and we also saw Eridicron we... take off for parts unknown. One person that we haven't seen since Zerolet Caverns is Farrakh. We get to catch up with him here. More importantly, what's going on is that Amirdrasil, that tree, the, the seed that Tyrande took from the Shadowlands, she's planted it, it's been growing in the Emerald Dream, and it's about to cross over. It's a very powerful tree. We're not the only ones interested in it. Of course not. So, can't be that easy. <laughs> of course not. No, it can't be that. It's never that easy. So uh, it turns out Farrakh's kind of interested in this tree, and he's got some friends that he's bringing along with him. We finally enter the portal into the Emerald Dream. What does it look like? What can we expect? So the portal in Anara and Plains is where right? we get and to it. And I've seen like bits and pieces of it since like what? Yeah, since, I don't know, back in, you know, the classic days when the game was first kind of released. Druids. Yeah. yeah, with the Druids. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think more recently, the Emerald Nightmare Raid mm -hmm. back in Legion, right? But we've always visited these little pockets. And in Guardians of the Dream, we get to visit like an actual section of the dream. I, the Ooh. Emerald Dream itself is a reflection of the wild world. So it's green, it's overgrown, it's beautiful, there's stuff blooming all over the, the place. The Titan statue also, looks very we dorky. Aren't the only okay. ones interested in that tree. Uh, Farrakh is there, and he's got some allies with him. So the place is, while part of it is, you know, overgrown, wild, beautiful, blooming. We have seen the Druids of, of the Flame being day of mind. Have hit this place. It's a war torn landscape, right? It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but we're there to fix it yeah. and make sure that. Farrakh doesn't get what he wants. If you are familiar with lore, we're going to the Eye of Ysera. And it's a place that has been mentioned in lore for a very long time. We've never been there. It's the center of the Emerald Dream. Not literally, <laughs> figuratively. So the Eye of Ysera focuses on the areas of the dream that are they, they need the most attention from the Green Dragon flight. And in Guardians of the Dream, it's a Mirdras Hill. Uh, obviously, okay. you know, we want to help bring this tree from the Emerald Dream into Azeroth. The outdoor so that's area, look of the tree. Uh, that we cool. Have, you know, releasing with our content update is just absolutely gorgeous. The art team has really outdone themselves yet again. I mean, it looks and nice. Seeing the Emerald Dream in all of its glory, right? As players get to explore finally, like an actual zone that represents sort of all. Doesn't of the, look as vibrant uh, as I was expecting. Like, sort of kind of does there a little bit the more. Emerald Dream, and, and we're going to see tons of great characters that yeah. we kind of know and love that are related um, to the Emerald Dream itself. So within this new zone, there's a new raid. Can you tell us more about the new raid? So we've got some yeah, Arius so coming back. The, That's um, always fun. Sort of war-torn places um, within the Emerald Dream um, is our new raid, Amir Drasil, the Dream's Hope. This is a nine boss uh, raid 
where players uh, get to explore one of the most interesting places within the Emerald Dream. The story here um, starts at Wellspring Temple, um, which is sort of a place within the Emerald Dream that's feeding Amir Drasil, this world tree, all of its kind of energy and, and life force. It's nurturing the yeah. tree. It's a very important place um, to Farrakh and his designs this on the Emerald Dream. This looks very much like... To, um, um, sort of achieve here. One wing of the temple is Sort of like a cross Brock between Tomb of Sargeras and Nighthold. And that kind of look sort of to the it. the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. There are defenders of the temple here who are natural <laughs> to the dream, and one of those defenders is our wing boss for that section, uh, Nimue, Weaver of that the That looks cool. So when players enter Nimue's chamber, um, it's this beautiful sanctum I like the big that really lady. represents sort of the Emerald Dream in its most pure form. On the floor of the chamber, Nimue um, is ordering the weave of the Emerald Dream itself sort of represent the act of creating things with the Interesting Emerald Dream use of the word and, ordering and, there. I wonder the if that's anything. Of, uh, our raid, uh, this is a wing that's been destroyed by Farrakh and his... It's like life and order, allies, two very different right? things. Smolderon sits at the end of this wing, uh, the Fire Lord himself, and fire has sort of poured through this portal where Farrakh has brought the Firelands sort of screaming, you know, into the temple itself. So we're going to see uh, all the destruction that that has wrought um, and be able to fight Smolderon right at the end of that wing. Another encounter we have uh, within the raid is Tendril Sage Swift, who is one of the leaders of the... It's a bad time to pause, but... I'm, I'm of that group that will always think that the, the Night Elf standing... The Night Elf male standing animation, the bouncing on your toes... Awful. It looks so bad. I hate it so much. The Druid of the Flame. Yeah, Druids of the Flame, basically the last time we saw them was in Cataclysm when we defeated Thandral Staghelm. But they've been I fidget and I don't even stand like that. And with the burning of Teldrassil, they've been able to recruit a lot more willing people to go along with their plans. The exciting thing about this encounter is that finally we'll get to Dragon Ride within a raid encounter um, in Dragonflight. So um, this is an incredibly cool opportunity to be able to jump on dragon back with, you know, all of your friends that you're raiding with um, and pursue Tendril as he sort of like flies around Amir Drasil, right? You're like banking through fireballs and stuff during combat. So um, it's going to be really exciting to see. So like a list resort turned up to 10, yeah, I'm assuming. Sounds really that sounds, cool that sounds pretty fun, actually. But mechanically, yeah. we need people to test it out. <laughs> we just need people to test yeah, it out. Yeah, the PTR is so helpful for that. <laughs> and then, of course, I mean, we can't forget oh, yeah. uh, Farrakh, right? Finally. Yeah, the reason. Finally. Spicy, nasty boy. Oh, I'm yeah. ready to beat him up. <laughs> he's, uh, he's here in the Emerald Dream, and the raid will end with a showdown against, you know, the fire incarnate himself. Mm. Is there any, like juicy rewards in the raid? Yeah, um, <laughs> so uh, much as in other raids um, for uh, during Dragonflight, players can expect some new armor sets that oh, they yes. can earn, right, um, that are sort of class themed. Ooh, 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 hold. Hold the freaking phone. Is that set on the left, the Death Knight tier? Guys, look, I know Death Knights are in a bad state right now, and I still play them. I, my Death Knight is still my main. I still love Death Knights. Death Knights are the best thing about World of Warcraft to me. I know they play bad. Unholy's okay. Frost sucks. Blood is eh. I am praying that that tier set on the left is the Death Knight tier set, because that looks so good. It looks like a Warlock plate set. And honestly, I would love Death Knights to have a fourth spec that is sort of like Necromancer Warlock plate. I mean, it, it makes sense. I want it. Even if it's like a corrupting healing slash dot damage support spec, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe you could mess around with that. But honestly, that set looks amazing. I like the Shaman one a lot. I like the Demon Hunter one. I'm in the way of it. Uh, can I, like, move myself? I'll move myself over here. 
It's got like a glowy green fell head. Move myself back. Um, those sets look really good. Death Knight, I absolutely adore though. If that is Death Knight, I'm going to be so upset if that's not Death Knight now. <laughs> it's like the opposite of... Uh, not the opposite. It's like the exact same thing if... Uh, like the preset of current tier. How all the Paladins wanted that. If this turns out to be like Warrior or something ridiculous. Oh, I'd be so mad. Right, um, that are... And what have we got here? These are kind of interesting. I don't know if this is meant to be druid in the middle or not. It doesn't look leathery. It looks sort of more male, I guess. Maybe male cloth. I'm assuming this is paladin, which is kind of... It looks fine, but it looks like the Horde version of the Legion Season 1 PvP gear. You know what I mean, if you play. And then we've got like a, just a, a little sort of class themed. You can uh, just see, just see it before it sort of cuts out of frame there. Sort of class. We've got a little little mage fella. That looks fine. I like the big hat, and I like the big sort of coattails that uh, mages have been getting um, recently. Also have a touch of the they look really good. I right, like those. Um, They're beautiful. A, their, their <laughs> art is absolutely incredible for these uh, new sets uh, within the raid. So they can expect new sets to earn um, that'll each have, you know, class bonuses. Oh, we got more! <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess. The one on the right is Rogue. Or Monk. Could be Monk. In fact, yeah, yeah, probably more likely Monk. I spoke way too quickly on that. You can see the chi on the shoulders and the sort of ropes on the belt and the feet. That's definitely Monk. Middle, I'm assuming, is Warrior. Which... Is... It doesn't look good on a walk, <laughs> I'll say that. But I think that could be a decent looking set. And on the left, I'm assuming that is Warlock. Which looks... Amazing. I'm not sure about that color scheme in particular, but the set looks phenomenal. <laughs> this is on them. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to get my hands on them uh, for my characters. I love got no more previews just yet. Speaking of getting our hands on something, yes. Farak's got something really tasty for us to get our hands on. Ah. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a new legendary weapon yes. uh, in okay. Guardians of the Dream. This is going to be a two-handed axe so that players can earn. They'll have to keep their ear to the ground exactly on how to get their hands on it. I'm not going to dive any further. Could this be the axe that uh, Broxigar had? Probably won't be. That's such a wild speculation to have. But I'm, I'm surprised it's not a druid legendary. I would have expected that. That seemed like the easiest choice. It seems like two-handed axe wielders are getting kind of spoiled a bit, which is fine because I am one. But uh, we got Gore Howl finally in in uh, Dawn of the Infinite, and now we're getting a two-handed legendary axe again. It's been a while since Shadow Morn, but this is fine. Um, but yeah, it's a really powerful weapon um, wielded by um, Farak himself. Um, it's called Fear oh, it's... Lath, the Dream Render. Oh, so, okay, it's not Broxigar's um, Axe. The, I'm wrong. Update. That would have been and, cool. Um, that would have been very you know, cool. We're, uh, we, we hope we can provide um, something that you know, players really feel like they can um, earn the Axe um, over time and um, feel really rewarded for their time in the raid. So we've spoke about the amazing raid and the beautiful zone of the Emerald Dream. What other things can we expect in Guardians of the Dream? So we've got something really unique coming to Guardians of the Dream. It's not just one public event, it's three of them. And they feed into each other in this kind of cyclical okay. sort of wilderness nature kind <laughs> of thing. There's there's three different events. First what? one is the Super Bloom, and that one is, if you've ever played Overwatch, it's like protecting the payload, right? <laughs> okay, so you've got this ancient who's going through and he's trying to, you know, bloom the dream and you have to 
I, I have no thoughts about this, but <laughs> from from a PR standpoint, probably not the best thing to be comparing Warcraft to uh, to Overwatch right now. Blizzard. <laughs> Help him out by defending him from things and helping him get things, that kind of stuff. When that's done, it triggers the second public event called the Emerald Frenzy. And it's a farming oh, we got the kind of public back. event where uh, wilderness has kind of gotten out of control. So you go through, you're farming everything, and there, it's dropping currency, it's dropping seeds left and right. The more people that are in it, the more stuff you get. I wonder if we see the rad. Batani at all. So That'd that be interesting. So that the Emerald Bounty. And with the Emerald Bounty, it's a fostering event, right? So all around the Emerald Dream, there's piles of dirt. You can take those seeds that you gathered and plant them in the dirt. Over the course of yes. five minutes, farming into a sprout. And the more people that show up and feed that sprout and, and nurture that sprout, the bigger it'll get. When it blooms after that five minutes, you get to loot it for ah, cool stuff. I love cool stuff. Can you tell us more about the new renowned faction? Cool mega things. Yeah. Of course. We've got the Dream Wardens. I mean, we're going into the Emerald Dream, right? Oh, yeah. So the Emerald Dream is full of creatures that live there. And they also have a vested interest in protecting Amir Drasil, so they've decided to go ahead and team up with us. But it's composed <laughs> of those, those creatures from the Emerald Dream. So you've got Keepers, you've got Dryads, you've got Druids, obviously, you've got the Green Dragonfly, you've got Rune Bears, they're new, oh, they're that. very cool. Yeah. That um, looks sick. And they've all come together to just kind of like help us out. And obviously, as with any renown that we've got, there are some really cool rewards involved. That's a nice little mount. I actually like that. Guys. I need to it's level my like druid he... alt <laughs> yeah. for this because it's just it's druid heaven. Yeah, it's yeah. Druid heaven. Ann and I both played druids, you know, way back in 2004. So I think we're particularly excited to get to interact with this faction. I think we've never seen before in WoW um, these like types of characters that are really reminiscent of like Warcraft Three and like yeah. Night Elf and druid lore. So it's going to be very exciting to interact with a lot of those creatures and characters. Um, that is exciting. I never played character. a druid, really, but... So as we're dragon riding... I, I will pause just to share this little anecdote. I think the first time the first time I ever played WoW, my first character were... I had an orc warrior called Big Nose Dude. And... Look, I was like 12, 13. Um, and like the two characters I made after that was another orc warrior because I, I had to get a different account to use my battle chest thing. So I had an orc warrior. No, I had an orc hunter. Sorry, I'm completely lying to everyone. I had an orc hunter called uh, I can't even remember. Was it Ruffle Orc? No. I could log in and check, but I'm not going to. And I had an undead mage called Olimira. And they were the first like solo characters that I made. The first time I played WoW with my cousin Dave, who you'll have seen in uh, Deep Rock and other things that we've done, Resident Evil. Great co-op game. Um, the first time we sort of made characters, I, I think the it was the... It, we made Night Elves. And I can't remember what class I was specifically, but I just remember leveling up in Teldrassil and thinking, God, this place looks absolutely stunning. <laughs> and I mean, it looks dated now, sure. I mean, it's burnt to a crisp now, but you can go back. You can see what it looks like. And uh, I've just got such fond memories of Teldrassil as a leveling zone, and I don't particularly like the Night Elves that much, but it's just a massive nostalgia thing for me. So to go back to that is going to be incredibly fun. But yeah, I, we never settled on Night Elves. I, he then made... Oh, I don't know what he made. He made, a, he made a human mage, I believe, and like travelled over to the... Dwarf gnome area. And I made a dwarf rogue. And one of our other friends, he made a gnome warlock. And then we just sort of blasted through Dunmoreau, which is still one of my favorite leveling zones now. But yeah, that was good times. I've got, I've got very strong nostalgia for night elves. Through this new zone, is there new dragon riding 
anything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, players will be able to drag and ride through the Emerald Dream from day one, oh, uh, cool. which is really a treat with all the incredible art that is the zone just in itself. Maybe you there's want also to walk that zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I want to swoop under branches yeah. and like you know along the rivers and and through that environment. Um, they're also going to be able to collect new glyphs that are hidden around the zone and some new transmog appearance. And get some new transmog appearances. Uh, I don't understand the lore of that being there, but yes! And new dragon riding mounts. So uh, there's a lot there for players who are interested in dragon riding. Oh, that is so <laughs> ugly. <laughs> I know it's a, it's like a massive fey dragon. What happened to the model that they had in Wad? Why is this? That <laughs> during Dragonflight. Interesting. I'm all about collecting customization, especially for my dragons, so that, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, there's a lot there for players who enjoy that. Um, there's also a new active ability that players will be able to learn, earn, okay. um, you know, with their glyphs called Second Wind, that allows them to um, sort of like regain vigor instantly. Ooh. So they can gain a oh, little bit more cool. speed. There's new dragon riding races where they can try to, um, you know, try their skills at that with some of these new abilities that they'll earn. Um, and yeah, we're just excited to see how players enjoy zooming through uh, the skies in the Emerald Dream itself. That sounds handy for that dragon riding encounter, too. Yes. yes. So you may want to collect your glyphs right away. <laughs> <laughs> practice. Just practice. Yeah, get some practice in. <laughs> And there's going to be a new season. Can you tell us more about what the season will be? Yeah, absolutely. So season three will start with Guardians of the Dream. Uh, and with it becomes a new uh, Mythic Plus map pool. So we have eight new dungeons. Oh, OK. Are, what have we got? We knew Dark Heart Thick it was going to be in there, obviously. So Galacron's Fall, Morazan's Rise, Waycrest Manor. Oh, yes. What a dungeon. Dark Heart Thick Hit, fine. Blackroot Hold, fine. Everbloom. Interesting. I like Everbloom. Uh, Throne of the Tides. And Ataldazar. That's fine. That that's that's fine, I think. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't like that it all seems to be old raids now. It feels weird that there are no... I mean, Dawn of the Infinite, sure, that's split into two, and it's taken up two of the dungeon slots. It feels weird that like none of the base Dragonflight dungeons are in there anymore. That feels weird to me, and I know people are going to get bored of them and all that kind of stuff, but it feels weird that... like. One didn't make the cut. Two. I thought the plan was to have like four current ones and then four remixed ones. This just seems weird to me. For players to enjoy in Mythic Plus. Um, among these are some dungeons that are appearing for the first time in Mythic Plus that we're really excited about. We had our mega dungeon, you know, that players mm. have really been enjoying from uh, the Dawn of the Infinite update. Yes. And we're splitting that into two separate dungeons for players to enjoy in Mythic Plus. We also have two dungeons included in the map pool that really fit the theme of uh, the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. Uh, the first is the Everbloom, which is, we last saw sort of in a challenge mode format. Uh, and I did say I wonder if we'll see the Batani. I didn't uh, quite expect in that way, region. but... Um, which has a really druidic theme, right? Yeah. As we sort of like venture into the beginnings of the Emerald Nightmare and that story um, back at that time. So we're excited to get players in there and um, you know see if the routes have changed since <laughs> you know the last time they were in That's those dungeons. True. For each new season, we like to have a mix of dungeons that are more linear, but also mix that up with dungeons that are more open, like Atal Dazar, yeah. you know, and Waycrest Manor in a way to try to you know keep some variety in there. And players who I enjoy routing can have some options, you know, um, to really like sink their teeth into. <laughs> There's um, going to be, of course, Mythic Plus new rewards. Yeah, is absolutely. Is there anything else for the new season? Uh, yeah, there'll be some us. new a new season of PvP rewards. Ah. Um, so, you Good. know, new um, cosmetic... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> is that the warrior set? It 
looks kind of like the, uh, is it the Juggernaut from X-Men? The guy with the big round head? It looks a little bit like that. And that priest set. Man, I wish I played priest. So good. Priests have had better sets than paladins for two tier sets in a row. They're not going to be happy. Rewards for players to, you know, uh, achieve and... Oh, we got big, uh, we got the, 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 the bear things? They look like the Shadowlands bears. Uh, Interesting. They look fine. So, work on your gladiator when it comes out. Get yep. that fancy new mount. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Green, so sort of Emerald know, Dreamy Dragon when skins. When is the PTR going to happen? Yeah, so or was the that the gladiator mount? It was. Week. We'll be on the PTR, I'm you know, Ann and I will be running around, and we would <laughs> like to see um, players in there with us um, enjoying the new content that we have. Thank you both so much for hanging out and talking about Gardens of the Dream with me, and thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And we've got the road map. Interesting. Trading post winter, white and gray transmogs, UI accessibility improvements, class updates. Oh, I hope Death Knights get that. Oh, wait, no, that, oh, no, I've read that completely wrong. That was before, why have they done the roadmap before season two started? Why? That didn't even happen. I forget what the class updates were there. I'm so dumb. Everything's now live. Fury Incarnate's live, and season three, does it give her release date, roughly? Just so it says fall, so maybe... When does fall begin? Fall begins in like three weeks from now, two weeks from now, sorry. Technically. So, I don't know, seven, probably like two months from now, I'd imagine. Beginning of November. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe they'll get the patch out then expansion reveal at BlizzCon, I'd imagine. We'll see. Looking forward to that, though. World of Warcraft. Wow, yes. Excited. Very excited. Do we, do we dare look at what the comments are saying? This expansion is just far more superior than Shadowlands. The amount of production, road mapping, and thought going into this one has been next level, or really just more fine-tuned and less chaotic. True. No one's playing Dragonflight, but genuinely it's been one of the best expansions in very recent history. I'd say it's... I'd say it's up there with Legion. Genuinely would. Excited to see potential rune bear forms. Finally, WoW is heading in the right direction again. Keep it up. Dragonfly is, in terms of gameplay, really good. True. Keep the great work up, Blizzard. Wow, people are actually... Actually... <laughs> nice comments on a Blizzard video. What is this? Holy smokes, those tier set mogs look awesome. True. If the legendary axe takes less than 16 weeks of farming, the last boss... To get then everyone in charge of Nazaro design should be forced to play Shadowlands for another two years. Interesting comment. Frack could be the end boss here. Dragon riding boss looks good. Yes, it does. Swap throne of the tides and rotation will be fire. No druid legendary really. That that has took me by surprise actually. It looks like a Diablo weapon. You know what I mean. Hoping more races get Druid class based on this patch name. They had... It, it's not anything to do with Druids, but in the in the most recent cutscenes for the, the tier questline, I think they had a Kul'Tiran Paladin. I'm excited to see if that happens soon. 
657 G's that DK set looks New juicy. I'm in love with that tier set. That looks so good. That is such an amazing tier set. I really like this Shaman one as well. But that Death Knight one is so, so good. Can't wait to see the uh, different color schemes on that one. Oof. And that's, uh, that's going to be my analysis for this. I don't have much more to say other than actually 10.2 looks really interesting. And I am actually kind of looking forward to it a lot. I've still not played 10.1.7 yet, which I need to dive into at some point, And I'll do that in the next week or so. But uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for now. Hope you've enjoyed your stay. I, uh, I appreciate you all very much. And uh, like I say, let me know below if you're looking forward to 10.2. How you're rating 10.1.7 so far. And what do you think the state of World of Warcraft is currently? So I, I think it's in a decent place. It can always get better. It can always get far worse though. And I think compared to what we've had in the past. Dragonflight is so, so much nicer. It's a huge breath of fresh air. And yes, there are certain bits that are a bit awkward. But you know what? I've just been having fun with it. That's all you can say at the end of the day, I guess. Anyway, I'm peace now. Travel safe, adventurers. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Travel safe? I usually say travel well and stay safe. Ah, whatever. You, you know the drill by now. Take care. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.